let's let's start with Orange County. Um, what were your highlights from this? So uh, I'm I'm gonna pick two moments that really kind of stuck out to me. Uh, the very first one was like cold open on Shannon trying to improve her uh, Sidalonic <laughs> device with the doctor, who is clearly not that if, if, like worried about like the quality of product he's putting out. Uh, I mean. <laughs> She's a low-key genius. She's like, I'm a consumer. Listen to the user of the product. I have some really good ideas for how you could improve. She needs to get away from that dude and, and break out on her own. She has the right mindset. Yeah. <laughs> if only she was a doctor. I feel like. Yeah. She's like, if only he was a doctor. Come on. Yeah. Let's be food. real. Like, yeah. he's, he's more predator than doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I love these bullshit doctors that they have on, on these shows. Like. I, I, I want that job. I want to be Dr. Moon. I want to be like an intuitive <laughs> healer guy who you just show up, pay me money, and I say things like, the biggest stress is gravity. Sure, sounds great. <laughs> that sounds like a real thing. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and then he just like fixes her body with like some booty hole cartography and light negging. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, this is probably the most like unique uh, product that housewife has put out like we've seen lots of wines and home goods but never an at-home colonic this is a this is a new one so i'm really hoping she gets this i love how she shows up at his office and says first thing dr mood you look good and he who does not responds with uh okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's used to the cheap sell. He doesn't cut any yeah. corners, though. He's like, well, you do not. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh, amazing. That, that one really, like, just way, way to start the series for Greenway. Yeah. Holy cow. Um, and then uh, another thing that stuck out was when uh, later in the episode, Ryan met Jennifer's mom for the first time somehow, which doesn't feel like that should have been possible. <laughs> Uh, and I've never seen somebody try so hard to throw themselves under a bus, or at least that's how it was edited. Like, are you super uncomfortable right now? Let me just talk to you about how unfaithful I was, and we'll just get all yeah. this out of the way. Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, this was a standout scene for me, too, especially how often Jennifer's mom had to, like, bring up how great of a husband her ex, Will, is. Like, yeah. <laughs> multiple times just mentioning, uh, like, he was he was a good husband and Jen's like yeah he's he's a good man and her mom's like he was yeah a good but he was he was a good husband yeah specifically <laughs> husband yeah I also love how like uh, you know Jen teases the idea that Ryan's not great with fashion and then Ryan shows up looking like he bought the six <laughs> ugliest jackets he could buy cut them apart and stitched them together into an even uglier jacket <laughs> like he's in the fake it until you make the fake it part of fake it until you make it to being the guy who can dress so fashion forward with ugly clothes it looks good yeah I don't, I don't think he's gonna get there <laughs> there was a few like strange fashion moments here uh terry debro heather's husband got called out for wanting to pair a like red tie with a uh, a pink uh pocket square polka dot like pocket that. square yeah yeah <laughs> but nowhere near as egregious as as ryan's moment at least ryan's like leading into it you know that's like his his personal style brand is hideous you know they, they're, it, <laughs> it's somehow more offensive to just be have like like a pink note and a red note just be slightly off like that's it, true it's, like it's at it's least kind be of aware of it to just lead power into clash it. Just, yeah. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> there's yeah there's a little bit of intent behind ryan's like he's not intentionally trying to be bad but he's intentionally trying to be something Edgy so or, i yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah at least he's not like pulling stuff off the rack and just kind of yeah. <laughs> which is what most of the guys do at the show to be honest yeah like, just just like the most bland outfits like I, I i guess on some level absolutely horrible disgusting bullshit on your body is, is better than being bland but when i say it out loud i don't believe it <laughs> <laughs> on paper it doesn't work yeah. but... <laughs> but when you say it out loud it also doesn't work <laughs> uh did you have any other highlights from orange county uh let me let me let me see here uh oh man so i like the my first exposure to jennifer was like her and her talking to her mom about uh the kids kind of coming home soon and trying to be like 
more momly in between things. And then they're going to like, they've randomly decided to make cookies, but she's never made cookies before. And she's going to do that <laughs> from scratch real quick before the kids get home in 10 minutes or whatever the time frame was. That just felt <laughs> unnecessarily insane. That's a clear <laughs> cookie rookie right there. <laughs> uh, we do have the same measuring cup, so that's cool. <laughs> Twins. Um, uh, Dylan, how about you? What, what were your highlights from Orange County? Um, on the subject of Jen's mom, I just really like her her uh, her oaky accent, so I'll just shout out to that. Um, I do think um, uh, Heather, uh, you know, you know what? Good on Heather for getting a uh, her own channel on Fireside. <laughs> That's you know, it's a it's a big it's a big step up for her. You know, of course, everybody's yeah, she can Instagram live now. Everybody knows yeah. by now that you know everything that the that the famous Fireside app is capable of. So it's really cool for 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 Jen or for Heather to, to take part in this in this platform. That's 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 content that's not just shaping culture, but it's driving commerce. You know, it really, allows for interactivity in a way we really haven't seen from other platforms. It, it, and it, have you ever heard of anything so SEO friendly as HD Network? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know it's great for her, for her to have an opportunity for her brand and ip to really go direct with france fans and create a unique fan experience that she can monetize from day one because it really is the world's first interactive community are you reading off the web page right now yes well actually not quite <laughs> i'm reading off some text that i copied from a, a promotional video on their website that was my introduction <laughs> to when i googled because of course i wanted to figure out what the fuck the fireside app is uh and they have this great like promotional video featuring like six like niche nano celebrities one of whom is heather debro oh, uh, and uh but the main like celebrity who's like their main spokesperson like giving this like really like bland vague explanation of what this exciting new app is is like a psychic uh so i just think when you're trying to like yeah you're trying to push this on people and your your public face is a professional con man uh it's not you know nothing against psychics actually scratch that everything against psychics, <laughs> but <laughs> but they are professional con men or con women you know I, I see you ladies, but that's <laughs> not a great luck for your brand. And, and, and what's also really funny about the video is like when, you know, when Tamara is like, God bless Tamara is like the one person being in there being like, okay, what's different about it? Yeah. Like how, <laughs> what does that mean? And like the one thing Heather could come up with is like, well, your fans can like, applaud you or cheer you. You can hear their laughter. Which, holy that's, cow. That is like the worst feature for live tv of all time like when your terrible <laughs> tv show comes out and all yeah. you hear is boo or the one guy who figures out how to troll it and he's got like 19 televisions in his room like people are gonna <laughs> spam the living daylights out of that yeah but in in that promotional video that's also literally the only thing they ever mentioned to like show something that's different from any other streaming platform is like they've got like they're like I don't know, like VP of marketing or something, interviewing Howie Mandel in a little clip and saying, and you can put up an applause button. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> what is that even? <laughs> why would you want that? What does that mean? And why is that the only feature you're mentioning at, at this whole, in this whole video? So yeah, great that she's part of the Fireside app that's going to change the world. It's going to revolutionize everything. Very Definitely exciting. Definitely isn't a white-labeled TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, this this like launch party was a, a amazing moment for me. This was probably my highlight of this episode. I love how drunk Emily got like right Thank off God the bat. Emily yeah. Fucking wasted. <laughs> Cause otherwise the scene would have just sucked. And then it said Emily for some reason just shows up having apparently chugged a bottle of champagne for breakfast. <laughs> starts eating the same way a guinea pig does at the table. God bless her. <laughs> I like that. She ended up having like four drinks on the go before they got seated that were like half finished <laughs> on, on that little cocktail table. And I think between every promo. one, they got an audio clip of her being like, Oh, I've already had too much to drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, shout out to Gita being a very good sober friend to a drunk friend. She was doing a really mm -hmm. good job being like, no, swallow it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> also, what a brilliant walking facial expression for that entire scene. Like when they're sitting yeah. around the table and she's just the yeah. eyebrows the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I thought this was like the perfect moment for like self-insertion. Like I 
I feel like I have had, I have made Dylan a Gina to my Emily situation at some point being <laughs> and vice like versa. Too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like just being in that situation where, you know, you've got a friend that is like, too drunk and it's like i know that i'm not going to be able to like redirect this i've just gotta you know kind of try to manage the the situation is um so funny and so relatable yeah i have definitely have had my moments of being like please check emily simpson.com you can hire yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> uh what other highlights did you have here dylan um just a quick note that uh while i'm kicking heather while she's down uh it is like it is such an annoying, aggressive thing to ask if somebody is coming to your event, specifically the way Heather does when she when she texts Shannon, like, are you going to Texas or are you coming to my thing? Like providing <laughs> like A or B options without like an option for like just saying, no, I can't make it uh, is like just an unnecessarily aggressive, overbearing <laughs> way to talk to your friends. It's like getting instructions from a boss at a corporation, you know, like yeah. you don't have yeah. any outs. Here's your, here's your decisions employee. Yeah. It's like saying, are you coming in to work or do you have a doctor's note? You know, like it's, it's, <laughs> it's being too aggressive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of too aggressive, like everybody got very up in arms about the house sale, which I was very surprised about. I don't think I've ever had a friend run their house sale by me to be like, just so you know, this is going to happen. Yeah. Is that like common on the show? Do the housewives all run the house sales by each other? I'm in apartment yeah. life now. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it's not particularly common. I, it is common for them to just like use whatever to, you know, leverage that as an opportunity to maybe have a, a pile on from the rest of the wives. We yeah. saw that happen, like a similar situation happen in new york where they're just trying to like stir something up this was easy i feel like heather's just getting owned strategically this season i this has not been very good for her also i feel like the way that like we've been getting the exposition around this sale from her and terry has been so stiff and it's so funny that her like main goal that she's articulated this season is that she wants more acting jobs because every time that she's on on screen to try to like drive the plot of this house sale forward it is so stiff where she's like oh by the way we close tomorrow terry like i'm telling you this right now in the middle of the party <laughs> as if we don't yeah. already know you didn't believe and their it's... super cool dance party about the house sale <laughs> overlaid with all the drama yeah <laughs> it's it's so stiff and i yeah i, I don't think that anyone's going to be knocking on her door for more acting roles like she's expecting from this. Yeah, just wait till they see her on Cameo. I mean, Fireside. Or, that, that'll do it. Quibi, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of like, sort of like trying to draw up turmoil, something I wanted to ask you guys if this is accurate. I get the impression that like, especially from them sitting at dinner in Mexico and the ladies kind of trying to air their dirty laundry, uh, it it seemed like Tamra was specifically brought around to be the person who is like just stirring up the shit to make everybody else like start catfight. Like that's the only thing I saw her do the entire dinner or she was laughing <laughs> yeah. behind her napkin at the reactions. Yeah. That's why she has a spoon in every pocket. That's, that's yeah. She's, <laughs> she's got a spoon in every pocket. That's right. Um, she's like particularly good at that. So she has been on, like she joined Real Housewives of Orange County season three or something like that. And she is really kind of a genre defining housewife. She made modern housewives what it is. So she's like particularly good at that. And this is her first season back after being on break for a couple seasons. Uh, put on pause, as she says in her, her tagline. Now she's uh, ready to and play. Yeah, now she's ready to play and we're seeing it and we're reaping the benefits because she is so good at stirring that up. Yeah. One of the things yeah. that was really interesting about that scene that you brought up is the fact that everyone was kind of reluctant to bring it up. So Tamara just brought it up because I think that, you know, people that have a bit more sort of skin in the game, they need to be thinking more strategically about their social position within the the show and uh, the, the friend group. Um, they aren't 
necessarily going to want to be the person that brings this up and being seen as just like stirring up drama because you know that's something that someone can turn around just like toss a label on you and kind of uh use it to downplay any future um issues that you might have that are a bit more legitimate um but Tamara doesn't care. She's going to bring it up and stir it, stir it up. She makes a, dis- a decision quickly and, you know, learns to adapt with the consequences very quickly. Um, and that's one of the things I think that makes her just such an amazing housewife. Um, I think we covered Real Housewives of Orange County for me. Let's